Okay, thank you. Uh, so this is really a use case uh, based on Winod's tool, Script Analyzer. And uh, at the same time, I'm going to present some preliminary results of my ongoing project that uh, involves quantification of early medieval Latin handwriting. So I'm not uh, a papyrologist, I'm not a Greekist, I'm Latinist, and uh, actually I'm linguist. So my uh, point of view might be a bit diff uh, different. But anyway, you will now see how Winod's tool works in, in practice, what the results can be. So is it this one? So uh, <coughs> the data. Uh, the data is uh, original private documents from Tuscany of the 8th and 9th centuries. And they are actually a nice data set because we know quite a lot uh, about them and uh, about their writers. We know the names, uh, dates, and writing locations. This is really luxury. Um, uh, the Latin of these documents is also useful for historical linguistics because it shows huge grammatical variation. Uh, the electronic text comes from the late Latin charter tree bank, but the images are scans of... Uh, a printed facsimile edition, the Carte Latine Antiquiores. Uh, and the digitization of characters is, is really very time consuming with, uh, with script analyzers, so I only managed to, to process uh, 20 documents for this workshop, uh, but the aim is to do at least 30 more uh, in the near future. Originally I planned to do hundreds, but now I'm more realistic. Um, so why am I quantifying these handwritings then. Uh, in this project of mine, uh, I, I seek to assess early medieval Italian documentary scribes' writing competencies uh, in terms of their language use and handwriting skills. And my working hypothesis is that a scribe's language use is somehow related to his performance in handwriting, because they are both aspects of of the competence that they needed in order to do their job effectively. <coughs> the documents are written in, in a script called New Italian Cursive. Um, paleographers distinguish two main types, uh, which are the normal basic cursive in, in the upper image and uh, its chancery style variant uh, with stretched ascenders and descenders uh, in the lower image. Uh, from the 770s, uh, both scripts went on being used side by side. But let's see now uh, how I have operationalized uh, the research setting. First, uh, the research sample uh, must be defined. Uh, one of the basic axioms is, of course, that it's always good to have <laughs> rather more than less. But unfortunately, as I said, mm, the manual digitization or characters is sometimes really slow. And that's why there are only far 400 quantified characters at the moment. Uh, to make it easier to study the relationship between handwriting and spelling, I selected a set of documents that shows maximal spelling variation. I chose 10 documents from within the worst spelled and then from within the best spelled documents of the late Latin charter tree bank. And this uh, histogram uh, shows the distribution of the spelling correctness variable uh, of this uh, sample of 20 documents. Uh, the spelling correctness metrics uh, derived from an earlier study of mine. Uh, here uh, the spelling correctness is defined as, as the number of correct standard Latin characters in all uh, the characters uh, uh, in the unit under examination. And here this unit is a document. Here you see some basic characteristics of, of this little sample. Uh, the worst spelled documents are marked in red, while the best spelled ones in green. And you may notice that the best spelled documents very often come from Lucca. We'll come back later uh, to this. Handwriting competence can be defined in, in several differing ways, of course. Uh, in, in this study, I 
decided to focus on one aspect of the scribes' handwriting skills, namely their consistency in, in producing the same character within a document. This decision was partly dictated by necessity because, because my document images are not in the same scale and therefore the absolute measurements of individual characters can't be meaningfully compared between documents. And this is why the metrics that are used must be relative. So I will use the variation coefficients of the values of the handwriting metrics produced by script analyzer. A variation coefficient is a, is a standardized measure of dispersion of, of a distribution, uh, a kind of uh, relative standard deviation. Uh, then, then the sampling of, of characters. In the name of ergonomics, I, I, as I said, I had to restrict the size of the character sample. Uh, I have only extracted 20 characters from each document and the documents were also 20. These can't be whatever characters because, because the script is cursive uh, and the characters tend to be connected to each other. But to make meaningful calculations I had to find characters that are not connected or that connect themselves in only one way in, in this uh, specific type of cursive. And they also had to be frequent enough to be found in every document, even in short ones. So I ended up choosing five E's, five, five O's, uh, five P's and five T's from each document. And here you see uh, uh, this 20 character sample of one document. In, in, in this document the E's are sometimes connected, but the connection doesn't aff affect uh, uh, the character form. Technically, uh, the five E's, O's, P's and T's were as randomly chosen as possible to the human eye. Uh, it was done by dividing the image surface uh, in five regions I, and by clipping off one E, O, P and T in each region. Uh, I also tried to, tried to uh, automatize this, but uh, I didn't have enough time. Uh, so these red rectangles are places where a character has been clipped off, so feel free to assess how representative the sample is. Mm. Uh, after that, the character images were put into script analyzer and quantified there. And uh, over 20 metrics were extracted, some of which are clear and unambiguous, some other perhaps less and uh, all are perhaps not relevant for all scripts. Now, let's proceed to the analysis. So this heat map is, uh, displays the bivariate correlations between spelling correctness, some background variables, and the handwriting metrics produced by script analyzer. Yeah, red is uh, negative, blue positive, and uh, the gradients is, of course, uh, uh, indicates the strength of the correlation. Uh, first of all, we, we noticed that there are strong correlations between many variables, and uh, of course this was expected uh, because several metrics measure uh, features that are closely related. Uh, one central observation is that spelling correctness seems to be negatively correlated with the variation coefficients of most of the variables, um, many of which are also statistically significant. This is an important observation because it means that a good spelling goes with small variation in, in many handwriting features. This also seems to confirm preliminary our hypothesis that uh, the competencies in, in spelling and consistent handwriting are positively correlated as important elements of successful uh, scribal performance. Uh, as you surely agree, uh, correlation matrices are difficult to read, and that's why it's, it's useful to reduce uh, uh, the multiple handwriting variables into a couple of factors. So I, I uh, ran a factor analysis uh, 
which is, as you know, a method that groups together variables with similar variability. And the assumption is that the variables that make up the factor scores represent an underlying latent variable. I ended up with a solution with three factors, and then I asked Vinod to, to interpret them. Uh, and as he is the developer of script analyzer, he, he is, of course, the one who knows best the metrics. And this is uh, the uh, interpretation he proposed. Uh, of course, the features uh, underlying the handwriting variables are, are particularly abstract, so it's, it's really hard to boil down their meaning to one or two concepts, um, as would be desirable. Anyway, uh, these factors do seem to make sense. Uh, I recoded the factor scores into, one, uh, into variables and clustered the documents based on, on these new score variables. And the result was that this dendrogram with the documents clustered in two groups. And even though this clustering was exclusively based on the handwriting variables themselves, the clusters quite nicely reflect good and bad spelling. And this was, of course, suggested by the strong correlations we saw earlier. Uh, the green percentages stand for the best spelled and the red ones for uh, the worst spelled uh, documents. And here is uh, even a scatter plot uh, that shows perhaps more visually how, how well the three factors succeed in dividing the documents in, in, in two blocks. Uh, the bad spelling cluster shows with, with almost all handwriting features more variation than the good spelling cluster. Uh, only length, breadth, index, divergence, and openness uh, variables stand out. Uh, I would say this difference in handwriting between the two clusters can even be seen by an eye uh, if we compare these extracts from the documents that belong to the bad spelling cluster with uh, uh, the handwriting of the good spelling cluster. So, so this one is, is the good spelling cluster. Uh, take notice of, of uh, the relative consistency and, and balance of, of the handwritings. And this is again uh, uh, the bad spelling cluster for comparison. Here some, some documents show quite shaky handwriting and the overall impression is, is uh, rather unsettled. So there seems to be a nice association between spelling correctness and the handwriting variables. However, as we know, correlations only deal with two variables at a time, so we have to be careful in making generalizations at this point. Uh, in addition to handwriting variables, there are also some important background variables uh, that correlate with spelling correctness. They are surely responsible for part of the variation of, of the spelling correctness variable, which we have only attributed to the handwriting variables so far. So uh, the background variables, writing place and date, will certainly make the picture more complete by showing the effect uh, of the geographical and chronological context. Uh, the statistically significant moderate correlation between the date and spelling correctness is positive, meaning that the latter the date, the better the spelling. And the statistically significant uh, positive correlation between the writing place and spelling correctness is even stronger, over 0 0.7. It means that documents from the Lucca region uh, have better spelling than documents from elsewhere in Tuscany. This is clearly related to, to the well-known consolidation and unification of documentary production in, in the city of Lucca, uh, the capital of Tuscany, in, in the last decades of the 8th century. Then there is uh, the script type, uh, which we briefly discussed earlier. Uh, 
the script type variable is actually not as absolute a background variable as place and date, but <coughs> I wanted to include it to show that the visual quality of handwriting probably was also subject to intentional development and standardization. Uh, we have here the classical chicken or egg situation in, in the sense that an increased consistency in writing can be the cause and not the effect that makes us recognize the chancery type cursive script as a script type different from basic cursive. Anyway, uh, you notice that the script type, as defined by the editors of the Carte Latine Antiquiores, has a statistically significant moderate positive uh, correlation with spelling correctness. This means that the um, spelling tends to be better in charters written in what the editors call chancery type cursive. If we want to take a stance to this chicken or egg question, uh, we could state that the chancery style cursive is a variant of new Italian cursive uh, with more consistency in character forms and, of course, with exaggerated ascenders and descenders. Uh, the script, script type is not, however, particularly well reflected by the variation coefficients of the handwriting variables. And let's see why. Uh, in the bad spelling cluster, the only document written in something that resembles chancery type cursive is, unsurprisingly, uh, the one with the best spelling. Instead, in this good spelling cluster, the Carte Latine Antiquiores editors claim that five documents are written in, in the chancery type cursive. I'm not, however, convinced of, of these attributions. Of course, in, in, in general, um, this, this testifies to the difficulty of, of naming scripts. Nevertheless, uh, the existence of externally defined script types, however vague they may be, has to be taken into due consideration when preparing multivariate analysis in the future. But before I finish, I want to examine the correlations of three layout-related variables with each other and uh, with the other variables. Only line straightness is correlated moderately with spelling correctness. The better the spelling, the straighter the lines. And it's also correlated with four handwriting variables and with overlapping characters between lines. The straighter the lines, the, the less overlap there is between characters of different lines. Uh, the variable overlapping characters also shows a uh, statistically significant, quite strong correlation with script type, so that the chancery type cursive documents display fewer overlapping <coughs> characters between lines. The variable even line spacing doesn't seem to correlate significantly with any variable, so it should be discarded, I, I think. Finally, there is a fully subjective psychometric variable, regularity of writing. Before I started quantifying characters, I, I evaluated the regularity of the handwriting in each document on a four-level scale. This variable correlates surprisingly strongly with spelling correctness, writing place, and several handwriting variables. And I, I, I think it proves that uh, the eye-based estimation of handwriting's overall regularity corresponds quite well to the variation of individual handwriting features measured by script analyzer. In other words, handwriting looks the more regular, uh, the less its constituent characters show variation in length, size, circularity, perpendicularity, and so on. And here is finally the conclusion slide and the to-do list. Uh, so it looks that we can state that those scribes who knew standard Latin spelling also knew their job in terms of writing more consistent handwriting 
than those who made spelling mistakes. And second, uh, my operational license seems to work, at least in, in this particular case. And of course, this also proves that script analyzer succeeds in quantifying handwriting features that we see with our eyes. In the future, uh, I will need more data, as I said, to be able to utilize multivariate statistical methods uh, and uh, other linguistic variables will also be taken into examination. I have al already prepared several uh, uh, variables concerning the scribe's mastery in morphology and syntax. So that was it. Thank you. <laughs>